It really isn't summer until you've had some really good stuffed clams. It's not so easy to find. You gotta be in the right area. You gotta be by the coast. You gotta be at the right restaurant. Make sure they use good quality seafood. Usually the stuffing has no flavor. Or worst of all, the clams are tough and chewy. Today we're looking to solve all of those problems and make a delicious spicy baked stuffed clams oreganata. So let's just jump right into it. The first step's gonna be dealing with the clams. And right here, when I store clams, you never wanna store them in a bag sealed up. They need to breathe. If you seal them off, they're gonna suffocate and die. And you don't wanna store them in water, otherwise they'll drown and they'll die. I keep them in some damp paper towel and then just let them sit in the fridge. And we've got these guys that we need to clean even further. So we're just gonna get these into a bowl. We're gonna rinse with some cold water and we get some salt on there. I'm gonna soak them for like 10 to 15 minutes to kind of expel some of the grit inside. And then I'm just gonna rinse them off. And we're gonna throw them into a 350 degree oven just until they crack open and then we can easily shuck them from there. So just get those clams covered in some cold water. Sprinkle a little bit of salt on top and let those sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. You see some bubbling in the water? That's a good sign that they're still alive. Take a small sheet tray, just enough to fit all of the clams, and get enough water in there just to cover the bottom of the tray. Then I'm gonna rinse and scrub off each of the clams and then orient them into the sheet tray with the biggest ones closest to the back of the oven so that they can sort of all cook evenly. Set a timer for three minutes and then after three minutes, give them a check. If you don't see them open at all, Add another minute to the clock and then check them then. After four minutes, they're perfect. They're just cracked and we can get them out of the oven. You see how we oriented them? Each row is now perfectly slightly cracked open, not cooked through, still allowing us bake this again later and get it perfectly cooked. All right, so I'm gonna not use any special tools. I'm just gonna use a fork, some scissors, if I need to kind of cut the tendons, and a regular knife. I've got a strainer. This is going to allow any bits of shell or anything we don't want to get into the broth that we're gonna then catch in our little container down here. And then a plate for the half shells that we're gonna stuff. I'm gonna orient it this way. First, I'm gonna stick my knife in and I'm gonna do this over the sheet tray to catch this liquid, which I can always strain over here. Knife into the crack like that. And you wanna hold it and with this finger, like that to sever the tendon that's keeping it shut on that side. And then the same goes to the other side. You can flip it if you want and use that dominant hand. Release the clam. We can take our fork and I just wanna reserve this, go through in here and remove any bits of shell that are kind of hanging off here that might get into the food. I like to scrape away any of this tendon so it's nice and clean. And then pop the clam back into the shell where it'll await being stuffed. Now these shells are too small, right? So what I'm gonna do is pick, I think this is the right size shell. I'm gonna get that open. I'm just gonna take that fork and I'm gonna hold that clam right here. I'm gonna clean out the shell. And then now I have two nice size shells so that if I have any shell that's a little too small, like I can't get enough stuffing in there, just transfer that clam into there, this other clam into this one. That one shell is a nice little platter for two stuffed shells. If you have 12 clams, that's 24 shells and you only have 12 clams. So use the best clams to present the 12 half shells that you're gonna stuff. Make sense? For efficiency's sake, I'll open all the clams first and then pick my favorite ones and start planning which shells I'm gonna use to stuff. You're just working your knife along the shell above and below the clam and then you just wanna wiggle the knife, it's not sharp, to the corners of the clam shell where the tendon is keeping it shut. If you can just sever that tendon, the clam will open up nice and easily and you can shuck out the clam meat. Now once you've got all the clams opened, Take all of that clam juice you've captured and strain that out and then that's gonna be your clam broth that we're gonna use for the stuffing. Then just go through and clean the shells that you're gonna use for presentation. Remove the clam meat and then add those clams to the perfect presentation clam shells that are gonna get stuffed. So we've got our clams shucked and ready to be stuffed. 
The, for me, the thing with stuffed clams is there's so many ways to do it. Do you chop the clams up, mix them in the stuffing? Do you leave them whole, put the stuffing on top? I think it's better to sort of leave it whole so that when you do end up eating it, you sort of get the clam and you can taste it. And it's also bigger, so it's not as easy to overcook as a small piece of clam would mixed in with the stuffing. But again, it's a decision you can make. If you're gonna mix it in with the stuffing, you're gonna need more clams. So you're gonna have to like buy way more clams than you might actually need just so you don't eat all stuffing, essentially. Speaking of stuffing, let's make it. Before that, I wanna get the oven up to like a 450 degrees to get it ready to, for these things to be baked once we're done with the stuffing. I'm gonna get this into a measuring cup and just hold back on that residue at the bottom. I need about a half cup, and so I'm gonna pour three quarters of the cup just so I have extra just in case I need. We should only need a half cup for this though. So I got a half cup of some homemade breadcrumbs here. You can use store-bought. And then I've got a half of a sleeve or about 15 Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers as a seafood crust is very delicious. You gotta get these ground up though, so into a Ziploc bag, just beat it. It's about a half cup of the Ritz crackers, half cup of the breadcrumbs, quarter cup pecorino romano cheese. I know they say no cheese in seafood. That's like no cheddar on like a salmon, but this pecorino gives it this Italian flavor that you just can't replicate. And some salt. The zest of one lemon. Mix that up together. Now I got curly Italian parsley, some thyme, and some oregano. That's where the oreganata comes from. I think I want like a half cup total of herbs. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, chop it up very fine, as fine as I can. Some good for garnish later on top. Then I'm just gonna pick some of the oregano leaves and the thyme leaves. So this part's done. Now we need flavors. We're going to cut up some garlic, some bell pepper, and some Calabrian chili. You know me, I can't get away from this stuff. So first we need bell pepper, but I don't need the whole be bell pepper. I need like one cheek. So I'm just gonna go do one of these, and then I can even take it further. By just kind of flattening it. And then I have this piece that I could get really thin. The key here is to get this as thin as possible. So I'm gonna go in with my knife. Just go really slow and you sort of are gonna use the tip of the blade to create these really thin strips. Keep them nicely together. Give them a rotation to adjust your position and then cut those into just a really fine dice. Now for the Calabrian chilies, just cut the stems off, remove as much of the seeds as you want, and then dice that as fine as you can, and then add those with a bit of the liquid that they were packed in. And then grate a couple cloves of garlic. So now I'm gonna take uh, three tablespoons of butter, th three tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna get a pan on medium high heat, and we're gonna add that butter and olive oil directly to the pan. Get that melted and hot. Once the butter's melted and it's nice and hot, we're gonna add the bell peppers and a little bit of salt. And we're just gonna cook that for a few minutes just until the bell peppers soften a bit and become fragrant. Then we can add in the garlic. We're gonna cook that for about a minute or so, a little bit of salt. Then we can add in the Calabrian chili. We're gonna cook that for another minute or two before we add in the juice of half of a lemon and then that half cup of the clam broth. And then we're just gonna cook that, reduce that for a minute or two, get those flavors marrying together. Then we're gonna pour that directly into the dry breadcrumb mixture. Just get it all absorbed. Maybe just get a little bit moister. You kinda want it moist enough to bind, but not so moist that it will never get crispy. Almost like it can make a little ball. Touch of salt, little tiniest bit of salt on each clam. They're naturally salty, but never hurts to season everything. And then you just stuff that guy. It's really that easy. I like a good amount of stuffing, but when you leave them whole, you get a good amount of clam as well. So that's the balance. Careful of these shells. 
Just caught one, you wanna be careful. I like it tightly packed. I don't need a big mound of the stuffing, but making sure you know it's nicely compact and stuffed is kinda what you want. Another thing to keep in mind is that we're gonna broil these at the end. So if you have a nice flat surface of breading, then it's gonna brown nice and evenly. So try not to have any curve or mound action happening on top of the clam. Now you just wanna pop those into a 450 degree oven for about eight to 10 minutes, depending on the size of of the clams. While that bakes, I'm just gonna use the remainder of my lemon and cut that into little lemon segments that I'm gonna use for plating the clams. After about eight minutes, I'm gonna pop the broiler on and I'm gonna finish cooking the clams under the broiler so that we can get some nice texture on the top of the clams. Some might brown quicker than others, so just give them a move around and adjust the sheet tray to make sure all the clams are evenly cooked. And once they're all beautifully browned and have nice texture on top, get them out of the oven. To plate, I like to add a little bed of salt so that the clams don't run all over the place. The lemon wedges, some of the clams, some fresh parsley, some lemon zest. I like to finish with a little bit of dried Italian seasoning. And if you have some Old Bay, works beautifully here. So one side you got a nice crispy crust, the other side you got a nice whole clam with a moist interior. That's exactly what you want. Packed with flavor, beautiful texture, and the clam is tender. You know, it's a beautiful thing. I like to take a spoon, scoop it out, and you're in heaven. It's an easy recipe, but you gotta give it a shot. Link down to the recipe below. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more summer recipes like this, I've got four on the screen right now. How about giving this fish and chips recipe a try?